Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. We are picking back up with New Morning Mercies, and I'm just going to take from here. It says this, It is a remarkable story recorded for our insight, remembrance, and encouragement. It's a window on what every believer needs and has been given by God's grace. And next up is one of my favorite passages of Scripture, Joshua 6, verses 1-7. through 7. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus you shall do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all of the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, everyone straight before him. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Go forward, march around the city, and let the armed men pass on before the Ark of the Lord. The children of Israel had entered the Promised Land, but lest they forget who they were and what they had been given, God put a trial in front of them that would powerfully demonstrate His glory and His grace, which He was willing to exercise for their salvation. There was no way that this ragtop group of pilgrims would ever be able to defeat the fortified city of Jericho, but that was precisely the point. So God asked them to march around the city one time a day for six days, and then on the seventh day to parade around it seven times. Now, from a human perspective, what God was promising was a military suicide. God was teaching Israel that they must no longer look at life from the vantage point of human wisdom and strength because they were now children of the Lord Almighty. Their world of weakness and limits had been invaded by one of awesome grace and glory. As they walked around Jericho, God was confronting Israel with their inability, vulnerability, and dependency and comforting them with the reality that he would be with them wherever they went and whatever they faced. They would face no enemies on their own. They would carry no needs by themselves. They would not have to bear the burden or carry their destiny in their own hands. Grace and glory had come to them in the presence of the Lord, and in the power of the Lord, the walls would come down. If you're God's child, you too must remember who you are and what you've been given. It is never you against the world, because your life has been invaded by the grace and glory of Emmanuel. Say no to fear and live with the hope and courage that come only when you remember that the Lord is near. That's so good. I'm going to reread that last paragraph slowly. If you are God's child, you too must remember who you are and what you've been given. It is never you against the world because your life has been invaded by the grace and the glory of Emmanuel, God with you. Say no to fear and live with hope and courage that come only remember that the Lord is near. And one of the reasons I love this scripture from Joshua 6 is that I think it's like verse 3. It says, see, I have given Jericho into your hands. It's like he's speaking in past tense. But it it was, it, have you guys ever heard of the already, not yet? Like God has already given Jericho into the Israelites' hands, but it's not yet there. The already, not yet. And so the future is already guaranteed, but it's not yet here. And so there's this, there's this powerful thing that happens within us whenever we're obedient to God's promises and God's will and how we walk out that will. Because that's kind of like the fun, kind of not so fun all the time part of walking with the Lord is that his grace and his power and his glory will be revealed. And the author is right that there's no way that Joshua and those pilgrims would have been able to defeat and siege the walls of Jericho. And this is such a great chance and opportunity for God to show his power and to challenge 
the limitations of our human nature and our human experience. But I just, I think it's so difficult for us to remember that unless we're spending time in scripture, like studying this, remembering it and like storing it in our hearts, like intentionally, because I don't know how you all feel, but with, with that line at the very end that says, it's never you against the world. There are times I absolutely feel that way. And I'm sure there's times that you feel that way where it's not that I, I don't think that God loves me. But sometimes I do make the mistake of believing the lie that he's not that involved in what I'm currently going through. And that's mainly because he's not serving my will. And that's a selfish side of me. And maybe you struggle with that too. And I think that starts to get rectified when we stop trying to force our own will to happen and we embrace the will of the Father. And so because then we're not trying, we're not experiencing so much anxiety or so much stress around like, is what I want to happen going to happen? Like, is this, is this actually going to work versus we're really open to what God is doing and where he's leading and how he's providing. And, and and we're in tune with his power of the spirit. But whenever you feel alone, you start to forget his power. You start to forget his presence. You start to forget his ability to provide or actually even just care about what's going on in your life. And that's a lie from the enemy. And we need to make sure that we're remembering stories just like in Joshua 6 of like, wow, see, I have already delivered Jericho into your hands. Now go do this in order for it to come to fruition. And then that's that second part, which is now we need to be willing to challenge what we um, can logic and reason and what we can understand and be open to the awesome supernatural ability of God. And I'm someone who probably needs to be more open to that. Spoiler alert, we're actually going to be doing a plan next week, I think. it's And it's basically called Holy Spirit. And so I'm very excited about it. But anyways, yeah, I just, I love this story. I love how it ministers to my heart and how it reminds me to, to like stop worrying about the future because God has already secured my future. Now I just need to be obedient to what he's telling me right now. So if God is saying, Chad, metaphorically go march around that building or go blow that trumpet or, Hey, Chad, actually don't go work harder, you know, or actually, Hey, Chad, spend more quality time with your family or, Hey, maybe stop stressing so much about everything being perfect all the time or, you know, whatever that is for you and how God is speaking to you. I need to be open to things, not being all about me and my will for the future that I desire. And I need to embrace the future that he has for me. And you need to embrace the future that he has for you. And honestly, we'll find so much more joy in that. I know it can be difficult to let go of our own idealized version of life. But like what we can see here in the story, what would have happened if Joshua and his pilgrim army would have tried to siege the walls by themselves? They likely would have been defeated. And so that will be the same case for us where if we try to force our own desires and will on God, maybe something bad may happen. I don't know bad. I don't know how else to describe that, but something unfortunate and maybe we'll experience less than God's best than we're, than if we were to be obedient to what he's calling us to do. I'm going to pray sign out. Oh Lord, thank you for the promise of securing our future. Thank you that we can let our shoulders just drop. We can stop living in tension. And we can live with intention, Lord. Because we're not worried about everything, Lord. But just like your your mercies are new every day, our worries are new every day, Lord. Would you direct us to the right words in your holy Bible, that will encourage us and the right words that we can store in our heart. That way we won't sin against you. That way we can have uh, little beautiful things to remember in those moments of worry, in those moments of stress or those moments of anxiety um, or those moments of confusion, God, to know that we can take a deep breath. We can let our shoulders drop. We can let go of the attention 
and we can live with intention in the present because we know our future is secure. But we, we need to we need the strength and the discernment and the the ability to be obedient to what you're calling us to be obedient with right now, Lord. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for protecting us. And thank you for always growing with us, Lord. In your sons, let me pray. Amen. Amen, y'all. Now's that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece, and don't forget that we love you. We love you, and we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao, ciao.